smiling right now. So today we've got a really fun one. This has to do with, uh, well, sort of off-road wheelchairs. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you a guide on how to convert a C300 over to a chair that does a lot better in the grass or off-road, gravel, things like that. The best part about this mod, as I'm spitting, it doesn't require any fabrication. All you have to do is buy the tires. Inside this box right here is where the magic begins. Now, I'm not going to take credit for this. There's a local guy that I know that did this to his C300 and sent me pictures and I was like, that is awesome. What we're going to do is use these tires right here. These are Honda, oh, they are actually Honda OEM tires. These are 3.5 by 8. So essentially what we're going to do, we're going to take the wheels off of the Permawheel C300, we're going to put them in here, and then we're going to put them back on the chair. It was $92, including shipping, to get two tires and two sets of tubes. One thing I'd like to point out though, if you are ordering this stuff, I'll put some links down below to the search terms that you can use to find this stuff. But when you get the tubes, you wanna make sure you have right angle or at least 45 degree valve stems. If you have ones that are straight up and down, uh, as you'll see here in a little bit, you won't be able to fill the tires. So very important that we have these bent ones. It actually looks like all they do is bend them. See how that's kinked a little bit right there? I mean, not too big a deal. I guess you could bend your own at the risk of breaking it, but you could solder it back up. Anyways, so this doesn't require any adapters. That's the best part. One thing you have to do, though, is remove the plastics from the chair. So since the steampunk chair, which is a C300, already has the plastics removed on it, I think we're going to jam these things onto that just to show you how to do it. And then I'm also sitting in another C300 right now. This one here is still in its stock form and it's got the plastics on it. Well, stock. This is the one that I swapped the F3 motors onto and I had to cut some holes here so I could reach the brake levers and stuff. But you don't have to do any of that for this to work. But I have some more C300 plastics and shrouding. So I will also show you how you can cut the plastics on yours so you still have everything attached to the chair. Basically the fenders here are gonna be in the way. A few packages arrived a couple weeks ago and I keep forgetting to put them into a video, but I'm gonna do that right now because he sent some stuff that I'm actually gonna be using for this project <laughs> as far as tools. So I'm gonna put that footage in here right now and then we're gonna head out to the garage and get this going. If you wanna skip past this part, uh, there's time codes below and also the new chapters feature that YouTube has should make it pretty easy on a mobile device or a computer to skip around in this video. All right, let's see what we got here. We have, there's a few things in here. Ooh, so this is a performance tool magnetic tray. Awesome. Again, one of those things that I totally need, but I just never buy on my own for whatever reason. I hope you find this to be useful, smiley face. Yes, there's one other thing in here. Ah, the magnetic wristband. So, there's a guy I used to work with, or for, or something, that um, originally came up with a patent for this. It was called Mr. Magnet. His implementation was a little bit different, but yes, very useful indeed, thank you. It holds a knife through the packaging, sort of. <laughs> I'll have to be careful where I put that. Electronics and such. Okay, we got one more here. I believe it's from the same person. Ooh, nice. It's the 15-pound uh, magnetic pickup tool. Also very handy. I had one of these a long time ago, and I don't know if I broke it or lost it or what, but when I was going to uh, school, uh, our, the main automotive technology guy has a pacemaker and he always joked, his name was Don, and he's, he always joked that these were called the Don Be Good Stick because when you have a pacemaker, most of them have a uh, magnetic like sensor in them and when you stick a magnet right up against them, it shocks your heart. <laughs> so, and he demonstrated for us too, he took a magnet and shocked himself <laughs> a few times in front of the class. Um, yeah, this is great. Ooh, heavy duty too. Uh, again, I probably shouldn't be waving this around 
in this general area right here. <laughs> Great. Yeah, this stuff will be awesome. Thank you, for sure. All right, I'm, uh, I was gonna say I'm low on coffee, but eh. All right, so we'll put that there out of the way. I've got a little folding table around here somewhere that I'm gonna set up as a workbench and make it a little bit easier to do this. By the way, you may notice that the uh, stairs for the crawl space are open. A friend was here a little bit ago and we were looking at some uh, wiring and other things in the house. And he was like, it's hot up here. So I handed him the infrared thermometer. It's 138 degrees up there. And in Portland right now, it is 86 degrees. It can get up in the high 90s, like low hundreds here occasionally. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving that open so we get some airflow through the garage, through the attic, and out all the vents that were installed up there when the roof was put in. It would probably be good to get a roof ventilation system up there, but I have noticed though, with that being open for the last four hours, the temperature in the house has come down dramatically and the AC is able to keep up. So here is the steampunk chair. This is what we're going to use today as demonstration. And then I have a couple other sets of plastics over here for C300s. And we're gonna be chopping the fenders off of one of those. I think the plan is we're gonna get this thing set up and test it since it's got a 120 amp controller in it. It should have plenty of power, be able to turn the tires just fine. And then we're going to modify some of those plastics and we're gonna bolt the tires onto this chair here. And we're gonna leave the plastics on. I don't think everyone's gonna want the plastics removed because it, there's exposed wires and things like that. It's probably good to keep the dust and dirt out. So we're gonna try it on both of these chairs just to show how if you have one of these old chairs laying around, uh, it's pretty easy to modify. Oh my goodness, it is hot in this garage. Um, so it's like 92 degrees in here. I think I'm gonna set up the folding table outside. Let's see if we can get a temperature up here. Uh, 127. Yeah, it's coming down a little bit up there. Okay, step one, get your chair up off the ground. Step two, remove the tires. Most stock permobiles use a six millimeter Allen cap bolt. So you can use an Allen wrench like this. In my case though, I'm gonna use a drill and some 3 8 adapters because it makes it easier. Now sometimes these little quarter drive impacts are not strong enough to break the bolts loose. So I just use this thing to pop them loose by hand. Okay, so this is going to apply if you are using foam filled tires that Permobile has. If you have air filled tires on there, rotate the tire around until you see this hole right here. And if you have air filled tires, there will be a valve stem sticking out of there. It is very, very important that I mentioned this is important. If you have air filled tires, let all of the pressure out of the tires before you do this. Otherwise things will explode in your face. Trust me, you don't want that to happen. Now these are split wheels. The way you get the tires off is you split the two halves of the wheels or the rims. You can see there's bolts here on each corner that hold the sections together. Now we've got the same six millimeter bolts on the inside here. There's two on each spoke. So we're just gonna use the drill here, assuming it's strong enough, and we're gonna zip all those out of there. And assuming nothing is stuck, you can see now we've got a little bit of a gap right, we've got a little bit of a gap right here. So when you lift this thing up, the front half of the wheel should come off, this little outer ring right here. And then this should, I don't know if I can do it one-handed, should push out. Okay, two hands. Okay, we're gonna need a flat blade screwdriver. Not a pry bar or chisel. Eh. And there we go. So these are the old school Permobile tires. The foam in these is very soft. 
the foam they use in the newer tires now is much stiffer and doesn't give you nearly as good a ride quality. But if you notice here, I can easily push my thumb into this. I don't think Permobile makes these tires anymore with their own foam blend in them. The new ones, it's pretty much rock hard. But as you can see here, we've got the two halves of our wheel. And those two halves go together, and that's how the wheel is held in place. Don't forget to hydrate. You can get fizzy water with caffeine in it now. 35 milligrams per can. Um, a normal cup of coffee is about 150 milligrams, so better than nothing. Okay, up next we want to go ahead and get our new tires on here. So these tires do not have a direction, so it doesn't matter which way you mount them on there. Doesn't really matter, however you want to do it. By the way, here's the actual Honda part number. That's not annoying at all. And this is the actual size. What I've got here is a little bit of dish soap and water. It just helps the tires go onto the wheels a little bit easier and also helps the tubes inflate inside the tire as well. That's so what I like to do. What I like to do is spray just a little bit of this. I like to spray just a little bit of this inside the tire and then a little bit around the bead as well. There we go, it doesn't take too much. And then you're going to want to inflate these tubes just a tiny bit, just to make them easier to put inside. There we go, that's all it takes. And then we will shove these down inside the tire. Now the next part of this is genius. I never would have thought of it on my own. So we have our permobile wheel here. This is the outside. You can tell because there's a recess here to put the caps in. As you can see there, like those little beauty rings that go on there. What we're gonna do is put this back on the chair backwards. Backwards is all you have to do to change the offset. The offset is the center line of the wheel here. And normally these mount a little bit closer to the front than they do to the back. See how this is like further down inside here? So we're gonna put these back on the chair, backwards. So this is normally how they would fit on there, like this. We're just gonna flip it around and go like this. And that gives us just enough spacing here so that the new tires won't hit the motors or anything on the chair. If you look at this gap right here, I can easily get my finger between the motor and the tire. If we put it on the stock way, not enough room. So all we need is just this tiny little bit from putting the wheel on backwards, and now we've got plenty of clearance. The reason I'm mentioning that right now is because of our right angle valve stem. We want this to be pointing towards the outside of the chair, because if it's on the inside, you won't be able to fill the tire. I'm gonna wait for this ambulance to pass. Now this is where it can get a little bit confusing, uh, flipping things backwards and forwards, but we're gonna point our valve stem up because this is going to be the outside of the chair. Now normally, if this was going on here, we would have this surface facing up. But since we're flipping it around, we want to flip this over the other direction. Now all these permobile wheels, even if you have solid tires on there, are going to have a valve stem cutout. You just basically have to look for it. It's going to be on one of the three sides. So there it is right there. So we're going to line up our valve stem so that's pointing down like that. And you can see it just fits into the little cutout there. This used to be the outside, but now it's gonna be the inside. So our valve stem's pointing down, which means we'll be able to fill it from the outside. Same thing on these outer rings. There's one of these sides that is set up to have the valve stem. If you notice right here, we've got this little divot and that signifies it needs to go over the top of this. When you're putting these two halves back together, you wanna to pay attention to a few things. You've got your tube inside here, and the reason we inflated it a little bit is so it, in theory, won't get pinched. Because when you put these two halves together, that tube can get pinched between the two halves. So you wanna just make sure everything's lined up and your tube is perfectly centered here. 
and it's not going to get pinched in this area. Then we're going to line up this little tab right here. And we're just going to put the two halves together just like that. And you'll be able to tell if the tube is pinched in there because when you push down on the outer ring, there will be a little gap here. See how there's a gap? And it won't go completely flat. So just eyeball that gap all the way around as you're pushing down on this ring and you'll make sure that that tube is not pinched. Now that everything's lined up, we're going to flip this over so we can put the bolts back in and hold these two halves of the wheel together. You may have to reach through on the inside and sort of hold it up with your hand. But we'll get... There we go. We'll get a couple of these started by hand. Then we're going to stand it back up, double check and make sure again that our tube is not pinched anywhere. And then we're going to go ahead and slowly tighten these things down. A little bit at a time, working your way all the way around. Because if you tighten one of them down completely all the way, it can jam and potentially break one of these rings on the wheels. Before we get them all the way tight, we'll go ahead and put in the rest of the bolts. Now see how that jumped right there? We, were, we, uh, we tightened up one side a little more than the other, and it's such a tight fit that uh, if everything isn't tightened equally, um, it can jam up, and that's what that noise was. As I was tightening it down, the tension released from when it was being jammed. And we're gonna get these good and tight by hand. These do not have a tendency to back out because as you inflate the tubes, it's putting upward force on them which essentially locks them in place. Okay, now that all our bolts are tight, you want to double check the seam around here and just make sure there's no gaps in it on any side. And then I like to take the valve stem and kind of pull it through just a little bit so you can see the rubber housing there. Make sure it's good and centered up. You can rotate this whole thing on the tire just a little bit if you need to. But as long as you take your time, and got everything lined up good, uh, it should be just fine. So it looks like we're about in the center there. So what I'm gonna do now is put just a little bit of air in this. Now these tires are rated for 267 pounds at 25 PSI. So they should be able to handle the weight of the power chair just fine. What we're gonna do here is slowly start filling this. There's a little line that goes around the tire and you're gonna wanna check the spacing on that as it goes all the way around. So I'm gonna put a little bit of air in here and start to get the bead set on the tire and then we're gonna check both sides and make sure that's even. If it's not, um, the tire will wobble as it runs around. So you might have to hold the valve stem with one finger and then get your clamp on there. And you'll hear the tube shifting around inside of it. Okay, we've got maybe 10, 20 PSI in there right now. And we're just gonna check this line all the way around. So we follow it all the way around and it looks like it's pretty even on this side. And looks like we're pretty even on this side as well. It's not as big of a deal with these, uh, with these tires. These things bead and center up pretty well. So it's not too big of a problem. Now they are rated for 25 PSI. We're gonna run them up to about 35 PSI just for long enough to make sure that the bead is actually seated all the way around here. Then we're gonna let some of that air back out. Okay, so we're at 35 PSI. And then what I like to do is sort of bounce the tire on the ground to make sure everything is set. Now sometimes when you're doing this, the tube shifts around a little bit in there and you can get some air bubbles trapped inside there and it takes a while for those to work out. So what I like to do, it may or may not be unnecess unnecessary, but it's what I do. I let all of the air back out of the tire and then fill it up again. And you can hear the tube shifting around in there as that happens. This is where that little bit of soapy uh, water will help things as well. Okay, there we go. And now we'll go ahead and fill it up to the 25 PSI that it's rated for. Now 
And there we go. Now we have a slightly larger diameter, slightly wider tire that has a lot of tread on it. This is going to improve the ride quality significantly because C300s do not have any suspension on the front. So having an air-filled tire is going to make a huge difference. And also, you can see there's a little bit of a diameter difference. I've got them lined up on the bottom just to accentuate that. But it is going to give you a tiny bit more ground clearance in the front. Now the nice thing about a C300 is it's only a four-wheel chair. And you can raise the front up about, I think it's about a half an inch or so, without affecting the geometry of the rear caster wheels or anything like that. It'll give you just a tiny bit more of a dump angle, which I prefer to have when I'm running around on uneven surfaces anyways. So, not a problem at all. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other tire, and then we'll reinstall them on the chair. Just for illustration purposes, I'm gonna show that these don't exactly fit if you put them on there the proper way. See? The tire is actually touching the motor right here. You can see it won't even seat all the way on there. But, now it fits perfectly. And, you can still get half your finger behind the tire. No spacers required. And I like the idea of not having spacers because that puts less load on all the bearings and everything else on the motors. And then we'll tighten them up by hand just to make sure we're good. And now the other side. And there we go. Now we have one of these things. Tires are probably mm, half inch in diameter taller. We've had to space them out just a tiny bit, but I think that looks pretty good. Oh, let me grab a tape measure and we'll compare the differences on width. Uh -huh. Oh, I just noticed something. So I put really large anti-tippers on the front of this chair, and you can see we just barely have clearance there. Um, that's not going to be an issue. Most of the permobiles have little ones like this. I just put these on here because I'm always doing stuff with this chair where my back tires are off the ground and I'm lifting or pulling something up a ramp, and I'll actually be riding a, a wheelie, as it were, backwards using these uh, wheels. These are actually off of a manual chair. All right, let's see here. We are 25 and a half inches wide. Let's compare that to the chair I'm sitting in. So this one's 24 and a half. So we've only gained an overall inch of width, which in my opinion, not that bad. All right, I think it's time to grab a cushion and uh, take that thing for a spin. <laughs> uh, so that's how you tip over a C300. Remember how I said these things are constantly trying to kill you? <laughs> Let's see if I can set this thing back up before the neighbors notice. That's hilarious. Um, so, the reason I fell over, I've got a 120 amp controller in this with the F3 motors. I had it turned up all the way, and I was holding the camera over to, a, over, over to the side, trying to pick up the sound of the motors when they're under heavy load. And I turned a little bit too sharp as I was leaning this direction. C300s, still a very dangerous chair. Maybe more so with these tires? Um, at least this luscious lawn. Uh, I didn't get any bruises or anything. That's hilarious. <laughs> I didn't drop the camera though. I don't know how nobody saw that. I'm really glad they didn't. Um, <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Be careful. Oh, actually, I want to check the tire pressure. 
I'm noticing that the tires are flaring out a little bit at the bottom, which is good for getting traction. But I'm pretty sure that Harbor Freight um, tire chuck is not accurate. I think it's about 10 PSI off, so let's see here. Oh no, we're at 24. Yeah, we're right at 25. Cool. So I actually wouldn't be afraid to uh, bump the pressure up to like maybe 30 PSI or so on this. Only thing is, I, I'm i assuming these tires are going to mark out a little bit, especially on like grocery store floors and things like that. And they're probably also going to squeak quite, quite a bit. But I think I'm going to run around on this thing inside the house and uh, see how it works for a daily. Hopefully, yeah, I'm going to be careful though because I don't want to screw up the hardwood floors. But uh, yeah, I mean, falling over aside. <laughs> And not being dumb, uh, I think it should be a decent daily chair that's capable of actually going some places. Oh yeah, plenty of clearance, no problem. I mean, we're only an inch wider with this thing with these bigger tires on here. And I'm pretty sure the C300 is narrower than most of my other chairs. Actually, let me, I'm gonna measure the forefront real quick and see how wide it is. Okay, the forefront is 24 inches wide with its stock tires on there. And Quantum actually has uh, factory four inch wide tires that you can get on their chairs. So I think we're well within the margins of a normal chair for width as far as doorways and stuff like that goes. Um, I'm gonna dump the footage onto the computer real quick. I really wanna see how it looked falling over. Uh, for some reason, the lens on this camera is a little bit dirty. There we go. <laughs> Okay, step nine, or whatever. Plastics. We've got a couple different color options up here. Ooh. This one's actually really nice. It's got the little rubber pads and everything on there. I think this is one of the uh, later versions. Like one of the last years they started, uh, like one of the last years they made the C300. Yeah, you can see this is an older one here and this is a newer one. The cutouts on the back are a little different. It's got these rubber things, and this is squared off instead of round. Um, just for illustration purposes, I'm not actually going to cut this up. For some reason, I have decided that I'm not going to be putting those tires on this daily chair. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, about that. The C300, like I've always said, is not a very safe chair. If you're running around you're not using ramps, you're not going on uneven surfaces, it's fine. But the second you try to do anything, it's pretty unstable. Now that was 100% my fault. I was leaning hard to the left holding the camera. I was trying to record the sounds of the motors when they were under load. There was not enough pressure in the tires. I should have checked that first. Uh, when you turn, they were, they were squishing a pretty good amount. So as I'm leaning hard to the left in a chair that's now a little bit taller, and that chair has a 120 amp Arnett swap in it. Also F3 motors, which are way faster and have way more torque. I had to turn it all the way and I was being dumb. So that's why it tipped over. But I'm actually kind of glad that happened to illustrate that you do need to be careful. <laughs> I'm totally fine. Hank Hill would be proud of this lawn. It's like a memory foam mattress. So we're not actually gonna be modifying these plastics, but I will show you how to do it just in case you want to actually put them back on the chair. Let me show you why. So the way these things are set up, you've got your front cover here and your batteries are right into there. The screws that hold the top plastics on also hold this cover on. And then you also have the cover that goes on the back, which looks like that. And the back cover that goes over the controller and the rear battery is held in place only by the well, actually, I guess there's little latches on the side. They hook over They hook over this bolt that has a little spacer on it. But it'll still rattle around if you don't have the top cover on there. If you're going to be running around in the dirt and stuff, or in the water, it'd probably be good to have covers, covers on it. Obviously, the... Oh, I forgot to uh, turn on our, our flare. <laughs> this chair is set up anyways to kind of look mechanical, so I don't really care about the plastics. But... It probably would be good to keep them on there just to protect the wiring and the controller. Here's the little hook on the back that I was talking about. This is what holds the top of the back cover on. Now, as you can see here, these tires are physically touching this. So what I would do if I was going to keep 
this all sort of in one piece. I would probably just cut along this line right here. You might follow it back here. You could probably leave this part on as well, just to cover up the back of the motor. So you could come down this line and then follow it back along here, like this. And this is just sort of a plasticky fiberglass stuff. So you could use a cutoff tool or yeah, some sort of spinning disc would probably be the best way to do it. You could you could use a hacksaw blade by hand, maybe one of those keyhole saws. Um, that would probably work. But we're not going to be doing that. I've changed my mind. I'm not putting them on this chair. So there we go. We have one of these things now. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. I guess. Uh, well, I'm going over to a friend's place tomorrow that has. Well, I'm going to be running around in the dirt and the gravel and stuff. So I guess it'll work good for that. Oh, I just realized I didn't use the magnetic tool tray. That actually would have been really handy for uh, holding all the nuts and bolts and stuff because they were rolling all over the place. Um, anyways, thanks for sending that stuff. I'll, I forgot that I have it. I'll have to stick it over by the toolbox. That way I actually see it and remember it's there to use it. <laughs> so, I don't know. What do we think about this thing? I think it's a pretty neat concept. It's pretty easy to do and it's fairly inexpensive. The question is, is it very safe? Probably not. Should you do it though? I think so. <laughs> um, just use common sense. Now, the regular C500s, they come with motors that are mechanically limited at five miles an hour. There's no way you can adjust the programming or do anything really short of swapping the motors to get it go any faster than that. Those five mile an hour motors are also not nearly as efficient. So if you've got a C500, you're probably not getting really good range on it. The motors have okay torque. They're only two pull motors and they'll be able to handle these tires just fine. You'll just wanna watch out if you're climbing large hills and things like that. I mean, these chairs anyways, if you're going up any steep inclines, things are gonna get a little bit warm on them, but it's not gonna damage anything. These tires really aren't that much bigger than the factory ones. So, I don't know. My thought was if you've upgraded to a new chair and you've got one of these things sitting around, I mean, you might as well do that. At least you can kind of go out in the yard or garden or whatever and just kind of run around. But anyways, there you go. Do what you will with that information. It's easy to do. I'm going to put some links down below. As time goes on, things go out of stock, different brand names change and whatnot. So I'll put the size and everything down below and some links that are current right now that you can buy these with on eBay. I think I got them on eBay. Yeah, it was eBay. Amazon does occasionally have these tires as well. I had some of them in my cart and I waited for a couple of weeks before I bought them. Went back to do it and they weren't available. So, internet's strange, whatever. But hopefully this helps someone out. There are tires out there that exist. And you know, worst case scenario, if you wanted to do this on another chair, you could just easily run some spacers and maybe get some longer bolts to hold things on there. Like I said though, you'll just want to be careful running spacers because the further those wheels get out from the motor, the more load is going to be put on the bearings. And there's other brands of chairs that do not appreciate extra load being put on some of those components. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed. Also, I whacked my head on those stupid stairs earlier, so I grabbed one of these 2x4s and uh, closed it about halfway. But it has been making a difference, though. The house is cooler now. Makes sense. <laughs>